Hey, how's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in to Facebook today, Facebook Live. We're here with Gracia from the Visitors Bureau. I'm um, really excited. This is our first live stream for Old St. Joe. We are a community video project um, documenting the uh, history of Old St. Joe. And um, so today we're down here at McCoska Coffee. Come on down, have a cup of Joe with Old St. Joe. Uh, that said, we're, like, again, we're really excited to be here. We'll be streaming uh, here today from 10 to 4. We'll be showing um, the Old St. Joe uh, documentary episode 1. Uh, the fur year, 1799-1843. And then uh, that'll be down here streaming all day. And then at one o'clock, we're gonna head over to the downtown library. And Laura Wyeth is going to um, present the History Speaks from two to three o'clock. That said, enough of my chatter. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Gracia. Uh, thanks for everybody that's tuning in and uh, glad to have you. Hi, Gracia, how are you today? Hi, Toby. So Happy gonna... Saturday. You too. <clears throat> So thanks so much for being with us. So I'm going to step out for a second, and Gracia's going to tell you all about um, Visitors Bureau and everything. They've got some fun stuff going on. Thanks, Toby. So like you said, my name is Gracia Benzino, and I'm with the Convention and Visitors Bureau here in St. Joseph. want to talk a couple of events coming up. We have a holiday open house that's happening this Thursday, December 12th from 5 to 7. It's open to the public. We'd love to have anybody who wants to come in and share some refreshments and holiday merriment with us at the downtown location, 911 Frederick. With that being said, we actually still have our other location at 502 North Woodbine. I know a lot of people think since we opened the other location downtown, the new location, that we got rid of the other location out at 502 North Woodbine, which is our visitors center but we still do have that. So we have two locations here in town for our visitors, but also we have a lot of people that come in from the public, just the locals. We're glad to, uh, glad to welcome everybody in who wants to come in. Our downtown location has displays from the museums. It also has a wonderful mural, like the ones that are downtown on the outside of the buildings. We have one in, inside that's from Sam Welty. We also have a antique birch bark canoe from the St. Joseph Museum on display. And we have a 1,200 pound hollowed bronze sculpture of our founding father, Joseph Rubidu. So we have a really beautiful visitors bureau downtown that even the locals are, are still coming in and complimenting and our visitors as well. Many visitors who travel around the country have complimented that we have a beautiful visitor center. So we'd be glad to have you again, December 12th, this Thursday from five to seven, we're gonna have light refreshments, cookies, cider, coffee, and everything like that. So we hope to see you guys. And then also I wanna talk about an upcoming event. We don't have dates yet, but it's called Show Me St. Joseph. It's a workshop that I'm going to be um, taking over in 2020 and basically it is an all-day workshop nine to four it's twenty dollars but that fee covers admission to the different museums that we go into as well as a tour home uh, lunch is provided we have a step-on guide for the bus tour that we do around town and basically what it is it's just to educate the public and frontline employees of the different attractions so that when we have visitors that come into St. Joseph, we can be informed and educated about all the wonderful history, all the lovely attractions, the architecture, everything that St. Joseph has that makes us such a wonderful and unique um, community. So again, we don't have dates set for the 2020 workshop yet, but you can go online to stjomo.com, which is our website. It's full of information. It has a calendar of events that's updated that has so much of what we know here in town we have to offer. So many fun events that happen um, every week, weekend and really daily. So check that out. We also have a Facebook page. It's Visit St. Joseph, Missouri and we keep that really well updated. We have a lot of followers, a lot of um, dialogue and conversation. 
uh, fun pictures that are uploaded. Sometimes we take a picture of some of our visitors that come in to uh, see us, and they have great stories of why they come to St. Joseph. What I found of being the office manager um, for the last three years at the Visitors Bureau is that our, our visitors really love our, our town. And once they get here, they're so impressed by what we have to offer. So it would be wonderful if our locals understood and um, were educated about all that we have. So that's what I have from the CVB. Well, thank you so much, Gracia, and uh, really appreciate coming down and um, visiting with us today and uh, telling us all about the Visitors Bureau. And for everybody, if you can't see this, I'm gonna, we'll post this later on into this, uh, onto the page so that you can see uh, the details here. You probably can't read it from long distance, so. Um, I guess with that, we're gonna go back to our hold page. Thanks, we'll see you in a few minutes with our next guest. Bye, St. Joe. Hey, welcome back, St. Joe. We're down here at Cup of Joe with Old St. Joe. We're at McCoska Coffee. Come on down, grab a cup of coffee, hang out. Uh, really excited to be here. Uh, this is our first live stream for Old St. Joe. Um, we are with Missouri Western State University, and uh, our students are helping to document the history of Old St. Joe. So we're down here doing that. So we just had Gracia from the Visitors Bureau. Really excited that she was able to be on board with us today. And now we've got Daniel from Ruby to Row. He's gonna tell us about some exciting upcoming events. Definitely. All yours, sir. All right, thanks so much, Toby. I uh, wanna tell you guys a little bit about our new exhibit we're doing at the Row. Um, of course, we cover the early St. Joe history, so we decided to do an exhibit on preservation here in St. Joe. Um, our exhibit currently covers the Cracker House, which unfortunately lost the Livestock Exchange, and of course, the Ruby to Row itself. Um, we'd love you guys to come check it out. We have a bunch of pieces that are original pieces from both the Cracker House and the Livestock Exchange, some pieces that haven't been seen in years, um, along with some great video coverage to talk about the history of those buildings. Um, along with that, we do always have our great new exhibit, our great exhibits throughout the whole museum uh, that cover all of St. Joe history, going all the way back pre-Joseph Ribadu, all the way through the death of Joseph Ribadu. So uh, we would love you guys to come check those out. Um, we actually are going to be closing up for the season in January, uh, so anyone who wants to see it needs to come out soon and come check them out. Uh, but once January and February are over, March, we're going to be rolling out some new exhibits that we can't tell a whole lot about yet, but they are going to be exciting and they may be some stuff that St. Joe's never seen before. We're back. Um, thanks to Daniel from Ruby Road for coming down. Uh, very exciting. Uh, again, if you get a chance, come on down to McCosca. We're going to be streaming episode one, the fur years. 1799 to 1843 and most of that we're actually going to stream that for you live here as soon as we go to the break we're going to stream episode one for you but you can also come down to McCoskey and see it um, and a lot of that interview actually took place with Daniel down at Ruby Row, and we'll be seeing him on the next episode I'm sure as we talk about city growth um, so yeah with that uh, come down have a cup of joe with old St. Joe thanks a lot glance you might just see St. Joseph Missouri as just another Midwestern American town. We'd like to invite you to come with us as we explore the rich history of Old St. Joe. From the 1799 landing of Joseph Ribadu to the rush of the 49ers, the Pony Express, and the assassination of the outlaw Jesse James, these are but a few of the amazing stories that make up the uncommon character that is Old St. Joe. I'm Toby Lawrence, the host of Old St. Joe, and I want to thank you for stopping by and staying for a while. Let's explore. My name is Toby Lawrence, and I'm a full-time professor of cinema at Missouri Western State University, located in St. Joseph, Missouri. You can usually find me in my office, working hard on lesson plans, grading, or advising students. Hey, Toby. Landon. Come on in. Good to see you. Have Good a seat. You. Yes. Great. Uh, so let's look over the senior thesis. Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. Right. Yeah. 
where I'm in the classroom, teaching the nuts and bolts of filmmaking. So there's something that we want to say before we turn the light on so we don't blind our talent or anybody in front of the light. What are we going to say? Anybody? Striking. Striking. Perfect. So before we turn the fixture on, we say striking. So here we go. Striking. Yeah, that helps. So just remember to plug the light in before you say striking. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, there it's on now, so. Every summer here at Missouri Western, when most students are heading home, we start preparing our summer internship film. Last year, we made our first summer film, The Eclipse. It was written by one of our cinema students, James Terriak. The film was co-produced and crewed entirely by Missouri Western cinema students. This summer, we decided to go another direction and start an ongoing episodic series about the history of St. Joseph, Missouri. As an educator and filmmaker, I have always been driven to find ways to connect students with the community through applied learning experiences. This is how the Old St. Joe Community Video Project came into being. Today, we'll start our journey at the St. Joseph Visitors Bureau. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Good. Welcome to St. Joseph. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So I saw the Visitors Bureau, I figured this was the best place to start. It um, absolutely is. Great. So you got a lot of different places to go. Where do I go next? If I were you, I would start with the Ruby Dew Row Museum. Mm -hmm. It's dedicated to our founding father, Joseph Ruby Dew. So there's a lot of information about Joseph and how St. Joseph came to be. So that should get you started. Ruby Dew Row is just a few minutes away. Okay. And has a lot of information about St. Joseph. And I'm guessing based on the picture, this is Mr. Ruby Dew here. It's Joseph and 1,200 Wonderful. pounds of hollowed bronze. Can we get a closer look? You bet. It was sculpted by Joe Beeler, who's a native Missourian. Tell me more about the mural, that's pretty amazing. So when we built this building and opened up in 2017, we commissioned the artist Sam Welty, who has created about six other murals around the downtown area. And what's the little building in the mural? It's Joseph Ruby Dew's outpost, as this would be the scene of what Joseph would have seen coming up the river. Thank you so much for your time. I hope we see you again. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for coming so much, in. Thanks so much, Grace. appreciate Enjoy it. Enjoy your time here. Let's head over to the Rubidoux Row Museum. Uh, it was really 1799 when Joseph arrived at the, what was called the Black Snake Hills. When he first saw the area, we know that he said that it was the most beautiful place he's been. Um, most people, when they travel around that first bend of the river, that's the statement they made, is that it was the most beautiful place on earth. When he was still trading up and down the river, right. Lewis and Clark were on their travels. And what we found, the reason we know he wasn't here with a permanent site is because when they first came by, there's no mention of anything being here, except for a few local tribes. They met with Joseph, they, it says they spent about half a day with him. He fell in love with the area immediately. Um, he started trading with the local Indian tribes, bringing them beads and getting furs from them. Um, he didn't actually found his trading post until 1821. I was reading something I got from the Visitors Bureau talking about Fourth and Jewels. That was his trading post. Um, okay. That was where the, the rivers used to meet. The Missouri's moved so much that right. that used to be part of the riverfront. Okay. He actually okay. was slightly off of Missouri, up the Black Snake Creek to have his trading post. He had furs piled five feet high on the porch, and that was kind of his life. Um, you know, before he moved here, like I said, he lived in St. Louis, really took care of his father's businesses. His father, who people refer to as Joseph II, was very big in just mercantile and general business. At that time, fur was the mercantile business. Because at that point, it was just him trading with either other fur traders who all they were looking for was basic supplies or the local tribe. The next watershed event would be kind of like flat purchase. Yeah, that was the next really big event. The American government wanted to purchase the lands that be what is now Platte County all the way north to the border. Um, there's a story that comes through the Iowa Indians that Francis White Cloud actually went up to King Hill um, and while sitting up there had a vision that the, what he called the white man's crop, which was tobacco, was filling the entire Black Snake Valley. And so he knew that no matter what he did, whether he chose to fight the Americans or not, they were taking his land either way. So they agreed to the deal 
And as part of that, they actually, he tried to get it written into the treaty that Joseph received receive land from it. Well, about a week before the treaty was signed, the actual federal government changed the law so that private industry people couldn't receive land from a deal like that. So Joseph became basically a squatter. Um, and the land that he later got claimed and the government gave him claim to was one that he got it due to squatter's rights over the agreement through the Platt Purchase. Um, around 1840, 1841, uh, there was actually a group of businessmen, we'll call them, that came up from Independence to talk to Joseph about buying the land he had and making a town out of it. So they, they, he loved their proposal. They offered about $6,000 and they actually had it in, in gold with them on the back of their donkey. They talked about their ideas. They, he loved their ideas. And then that night he suggested they play cards. Um, Joseph was an avid card player. Um, he would play cards with, he was actually how he introduced himself to the first Indian tribes. They were playing cards and for some reason, Joseph claimed that they cheated. The next morning he basically told them, because you're gonna cheat me, I can't trust that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do in my town. I'm not making a deal with you. He decides to start the town. He actually has it, uh, he calls in two men, Simeon Kemper um, and Frederick Smith, to lay out a plat of what became downtown. Um, both of them come up with ideas that he loved. Um, Kemper's idea had kind of larger, broad streets. Smith was actually had moved to St. Joseph region from Germany. And so he actually used a very German style building, or wanted to do a very German style style with very small streets. Originally, Kemper said that the town should be called Ribidoux to kind of play for his ego. Um, and then Smith decided, well, I won't name the town Ribidoux, I'm gonna name it St. Joseph because that was his patron saint. But he did name all the streets after his kids and his wife. Right. So they both kind of played to Joseph's ego. Well, Joseph fell in love with, with Smith's plan. Um, there's a joke out there that says that he claims, well, I'm not selling streets, I'm selling land. And so because Smith had almost twice the land that he could sell, he picked that one and has it the original plat stamped, put on file, and then returns to St. Joe and it becomes St. Joseph. That's a snapshot, a little snapshot of that kind of thing looking ahead to like, you know. Okay, well, I mean, at that time, it really was, it, it grew very quickly. I mean, even in 1843, um, we have some of, the, some of our books we have talk about that when he first built the town, there was about 50 people or so here, you know, a lot of farmers and him. Um, by the end of that year, he had over 600 people living here. Um, by the end of two years later, there was over 1,000 people, or those were 2,000 people here. And so it was one of those where it grew very quickly um, because people knew it was such a good area for business and because how the river was commerce, you had people like Corby and those guys coming in very quickly, very early, to buy huge plots of land. That, then it really exploded with 1849. But before that, it, it grew from 50 people to 5,000 in about a two to three year span. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Old St. Joe. We're so excited that you decided to stop in for a spell. Tune in next time for Old St. Joe episode two, where we will dig further into the growth and urbanization of our frontier town. If you enjoyed today's episode, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, click the notification bell down below so that you can be notified about upcoming episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you have a great St. Joe Day. Thanks a lot. Hey, welcome back to Old St. Joe. Have a cup of Joe with Old St. Joe. We're down at McCoska Coffee today, and we're really excited because we've got Andy Monty, the owner of McCoska Coffee, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the cafe and maybe fun stuff that's going on down here. So here he is. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so let's see. we got kind of a busy day full of stuff going on here at McCoska Coffee. Um, so obviously we've got Old St. Joe broadcasting live um, for the afternoon. 
Um, and at about six o'clock, we've got an ensemble piece from Missouri Western and the music department coming to play some live music from about six to eight or so. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of break then in the evening, and then we're also going to have some spoken word and kind of a hip hop show tonight, um, starting about nine nine thirty. Um, it's going to be kind of a lot of activity downtown going on. So there's uh, there's also carriage rides, um, horse drawn carriages. Uh, we've got hot cocoa that's served um, free out of the concession stand downtown, right by the gazebo. Uh, a lot of businesses are kind of doing a lot of fun stuff for the holidays. Lots of drink specials. Um, Lots of people are just kind of out and about, and so it's a pretty exciting time downtown. Things are feeling pretty good. Um, we're obviously pretty happy with uh, everything that we've been doing here, um, but it's uh, pretty exciting to be working alongside Toby and a lot of the other students from Missouri Western. I like a lot of what I've been seeing with Old St. Joe. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, <laughs> I know that the Missouri Theater next door also has a uh, showing from the Ruby Doo Resident Theater. Um, they're doing a live performance of Elf, and that's going on this evening. And uh, other than that, it's just a beautiful day outside. Um, we're pretty excited. We've got a little bit of work that we're doing on the patio, but we've got um, kind of some seating out there, good little courtyard, beautiful day to just kind of get out and about downtown. So um, looking forward to seeing some of you all down here, and I'll kind of hand it back over to Toby. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Um, Again, we're real excited to ha be down here at McCosca Coffee. You guys come on down and have a cup of joe with Old St. Joe. If you got a story for us, just uh, come on down. And with that, we're going to go to the break. Upcoming next, we've got uh, Missouri Western State University, the APO. Carolers are going to come on and sing a song for us, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Ben Smith, and I'm an ambassador for Old State Joe, but I'm also the president of Missouri Western State University's chapter of Alpha Psi Omega, the National Theater Honor Society. And today, up next, we're going to have a group of carolers out here with Alpha Psi Omega. Uh, they're going to be around downtown, going around doing their caroling here. But we had them stop in for, to give us a little sneak peek of what they're doing today. So. To be jolly, fa la 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 la. 